So on this edition of the Secure Dynamics Techcast, I have a past guest, uh, Damien Chung. Damien is the Business <coughs> Information Security Officer at Netscope. Welcome, Damien. Thank you, Ashwin. Glad to be back. Glad to have you. So uh, let's talk about something that I don't think has got enough uh, attention, even though it should, based on our prior conversation, which is the topic of user credentialing. And define the term user credentialing for our, for our viewers, and then let's uh, double click on why that's so important. Really just validating that the user has the right uh, credentials uh, even before getting access to your system. So I want to differentiate it from, you know, access management. Mm -hmm. It's the precursor to that. And the way I look at it from a healthcare perspective, you know, a doctor coming in as a new uh, contractor or employee, you want to validate that they have the right credentials. So did they go to school? Did they get their degree? Are they a member of the medical board? You know, there's a lot of checks um, that you have to do on the credentialing side before you even grant them access and manage their identity. And, and that's what I mean by credential management or credential checking. So uh, I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit, right? Let's, let's fast forward 10 years. Uh, there are kids that traditionally would have otherwise, I don't know, gone to high school, passed out, got a degree and so on and so forth. Now things are online and likely probably they're gonna be that way for a while. So how would you, how do you uh, see the whole user credentialing moving forward given that, hey, you're no longer probably gonna have a degree from so-and-so university or, or yeah. a, a certification. So talk a little bit about that. It's, it's, the problem is it's a global problem, yeah. right? I, even doctors coming from foreign countries into the United States where we have right. a shortage of specialties. Um, the only way you can check is you call that school or you, you have to find out, well, is the school, uh, where is it? Did the doctor really graduate from there? Uh, do they really hold a medical license from that country? That takes a lot of time and effort. Mm -hmm. And so where I see this going is really into potentially a distributed system, mm -hmm. almost like checking for your credit report, you know, but you're, you're, right today we check for credit your credit rating, and we're only looking at, you know, three major providers. Yeah. I think in this case, we have, you know, thousands, if not um, hundreds of thousands of different schools across the globe. We have to enter into a distributed system. And maybe that answer is a blockchain. I know mm -hmm. we've, we haven't heard about blockchain lately, that the whole fad has died down, but maybe a distributed ledger where we can quickly validate whether this user or this doctor has gotten their degree from that location. Then you're, you're checking, your validation is a lot faster than waiting days or even weeks to validate it. Yeah, it's a great point. You, you mentioned the, the three credit agencies and Equifax is obviously still, still top of mind for a lot of people. Um, and does this also, uh, if you go down this distributed uh, uh, ledger approach, AKA blockchain, uh, would, does it also reduce the risk, security risk? Because now you no longer have a single target and you have millions and millions of records it's distributed. So uh, it, it, number one, that's first question. Second is how do you see the attackers adapting to this distributed ledger model uh, if, it, if it comes to pass? Yeah, I, I think right. The, the anything's possible. We have to start small and just validate this use case first. Yep. So maybe it's not a global solution, but think about it as uh, a local state level mm -hmm. solution. So if I, we have, three state universities or five state universities, can we get them to participate uh, along with, you know, the, the employers within that state? Um, that would be a good, a very good starting point. Now, could attackers hijack that distributed ledger? I think the way we have to control that is make sure it's, it's permissioned and it's not fully a fully public chain where somebody can take over um, uh, and, and be able to overpower the, the blockchain so there are risks to it obviously mm -hmm. and i think our ideal situation is to start small and use it as a proof of concept hopefully it provides value to these employers or to the, the hospitals if it's healthcare um, by helping them save money uh, waiting and uh, validating these users so uh leading on to, to the final question which is, which is really about uh, again and using this credit agencies, because I think that that's something at least uh, uh, lots of people uh, are familiar with, is in a, in a distributed environment as a end user, let, let's say uh, Damien wants to um, remove all records of XYZ, right? 
uh, is there uh, uh, are there approaches today that allows <clears throat> uh, allows legitimate use of actually deleting your digital footprint if you will uh, or does that still um, require a kind yeah. of a more consolidated approach yeah i know this is a good question so obviously if it's in the chain it's going to be there forever mm -hmm. i think the the difference though is it's not completely open and so you have pseudo anonymity where the the users um, it's not directly associated with you but maybe to a private key and so you can use a concept of maybe swapping out your 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 public key mm -hmm. and and then have it no longer associated with you but i, I don't know the, the whole details of where we, we would take that i think the possibility of maybe just dropping that identity and, and assuming another one but but then again you you enter in another problem of um you know wiping out your previous history so if you had really bad credit could you wipe out your previous bad history and start fresh and not have any credit history instead of being negative um, i think there's pros and cons to that um, we definitely don't want to have data being changed and people dropping identities and changing on the fly so uh, you know obviously a bigger conversation can happen in this space yeah, uh, and so uh, I lied. I have one more question for you, just given the, the trajectory that we are on right now, which is, um, unfortunately, there are uh, lots of deaths uh, due to the pandemic, right? And I personally know of at least two over the last couple of weeks, uh, individuals who, who no longer, who passed away, and their LinkedIn profiles are still active. So I've reached out to their spouses to actually uh, have them go through the process of taking it down. So, and you mentioned assumed identity. So um, again, given given your uh, critical uh, uh, position right now as the BISO uh, and in your community as well, uh, how big of an issue is this uh, in terms of people assuming fake identities? And, and again, coming back to the use of credentialing is to be able to, hey, so if I can assume somebody's LinkedIn profile, uh, uh, does that does that lead to other kinds of uh, yeah. negative outcomes? How do you how do you yeah? Well, I think I think today the the way we handle identities is absolutely open for um, hijacking of somebody's mm -hmm. identity, right? But if we move it more into a digital space where now you're in control of your own uh, wallet or private key, uh, or you should be in control of it. Yeah. Right? I can't say everyone controls it. Yeah. Everyone, you know, keeps a different personal security. But in that case, it becomes a lot more difficult for you to just assume an identity uh, from the public. From public key right so if you end up with a peak the key pairs then yeah you you you're going to be at risk but i think in that case you would set yourself up for better security versus just having um a social security number for example that can be copied as you put that into an unsecure website yeah it, you're right i mean actually this just comes back to what what uh, uh, everybody talks about which is hey it's just risk right i mean the risk level goes down it doesn't completely disappear so Right. Uh, great conversation. Again, Damon, always great to have a chat with you. Uh, stay safe and looking forward to our next chat. Thank you. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks, Ashwin. Thank you, sir.